Uh, how I can speak about uh, NetBSD virtualization status report. Uh, my name is uh, Kamil Tarowski, I'm a NetBSD uh, developer. As I started using uh, NetBSD since version 6.1. Uh, right, right now, now I'm mostly involved in uh, toolchain projects, in LFM toolchain and toolchain. I'm also uh, a NetBSD uh, the developer and maintainer in the Chrome project. Uh, I will speak. Uh, I will start with terminology. I will present uh, NetBSD virtualization in software mode. I move, move on to uh, hardware accelerated virtualization with NetBSD, and uh, I will show what are the feature points. Uh, so, uh, virtualization uh, might be a very broad term, it might, might mean a lot of things. For example, uh, C code environment uh, is also kind of virtualization where we uh, map. Hardware drops into uh, Sigma handler and so on. However, uh, in this talk, uh, we refer only to running full operating system that involves kernel and user land on top of another operating system. And uh, this also means that we are not going to uh, discuss containers, namespaces, RAM kernels, and, and similar things. And there are two basic types of virtualization uh, full software emulation and uh, hardware system emulation. Uh, hypervisor, also known as virtual machine monitor, is a special software, firmware, hardware, or a combination of them uh, that's, uh, that can uh, spawn and execute the virtual machines. There are two types, two generic uh, general types of uh, hypervisors, uh, type 1 uh, hypervisor and type 2. Type 1 um, is a uh, bare metal hypervisor, it means that we boot uh, directly into a software that uh, runs as hypervisor and uh, from one guest machine, usually from one guest machine that might be control domain, we can spawn another guest. And there's also a type Type two virtualization. Um, it's 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 designed to run on top of hardware, <coughs> uh, general usually general purpose operating system, and on, on, on top of that, uh, we can have uh, another layer of software that can spawn uh, virtual machines. There are also two types of uh, emulation. Uh, software emulation and hardware assisted emulation. Uh, with software emulation, uh, we can uh, execute virtual machines uh, for the same CPU, for, for other older CPUs, for newer CPUs, for different architecture. And it's independent, uh, either independent from the country uh, use the hardware. And, uh, this, this, this type, or type of virtualization is uh, usually uh, very slow in execution and uh, for this purpose uh, some hardware vendors uh, ship uh, additional features in hardware that can be used to execute uh, certain code in guest machines with close to native uh, speed. From, from the NetBSD point of view, uh, we have uh, two main interests. Uh, the first one is to uh, run NetBSD as host operating system, and, and uh, on top of that, uh, run virtual machines uh, for a certain operating system, uh, and also running NetBSD as guest uh, operating system on top of custom projection stack. Ideally, in, uh, in an ideal world, we would run NetBSD as host and as guest, but uh, in practical world, uh, we have interest or need uh, to use, uh, for example, NetBSD, like a cloud computing provider, 
on, on, uh, on custom virtualization stack and we need to ship uh, driver and stuff for the setup. Also, the situation might be reversed that we um, run NVSD natively and we need to run some custom operating system for some proposals, like retro computing or, or checking code on, for another operating system. We also need to set up uh, to start with uh, the setup. So, uh, as mentioned, so software emulation is usually very slow, but does it really matter for, for the NetBSD community? The answer is yes, it's very important for us. Uh, the first reason to use uh, to keep using software emulation is uh, uh, the purpose of development of new ports support for new types of hardware. It's, it's much much com more convenient to um, perform this task in uh, the current environment. Once we get uh, support for, for a piece of hardware, we need to keep maintain maintaining it, and it's also easier to uh, use virtual machines for this purpose. And uh, another, another uh, common reason is to fight on Convenient uh, process of debugging of, of kernel code with, with use of virtual machines. Here's one, one of the examples of using uh, a software emulator. It's called Spike for Risk File Board. Uh, one of our uh, community members managed to, uh, to start a NetBSD kernel uh, for Risk File architecture and Get it uh, running uh, until executing the init D process, and um, and it was performed uh, entirely inside the virtual machine. It will be much. Is that QEMU or different? Emulator? No, it's, it's a different emulator uh, from uh, its file uh, toolchain. Uh, it, it might be the QEMU patched, but uh, I'm not sure. But, but it's uh, shipped uh, together with this file uh, repository. And uh, once uh, we get support for a certain uh, port hardware, um, we, we try to keep uh, it going alive. And we use uh, in our release engineering infrastructure uh, automatic uh, setup for. Um, installing operating system for certain type of uh, guest and uh, executing a uh, regression test framework. Um, right now, we support two types of x86 uh, platform, 52 and 64-bit uh, version. We have uh, we test uh, daily Spark uh, guest two types of R and two types of uh, MIPS. I also plan to expand uh, the list to another port, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it needs uh, proper scripting, proper uh, test, also uh, cleaning uh, the, the status uh, of, of failures in, in other ports. And uh, this is mainly the task of uh, the release engineering team. For kernel debugging, um, we can use uh, virtualization software with um, user space, typical user space debuggers like GDB. Here's uh, an example of uh, QMU with GDB. Um, Q, QMU uh, can spawn bit in a GDB server. We can attach to it with uh, a regular GDB front end to it and we can uh, start uh, 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 at the breakpoints, software breakpoints, certain <laughs> find part of code, we can introspect into strokes, strokes uh, single step the code, etc. It's very convenient for debugging. So such tasks are much more troublesome uh, when when we try to use it natively. There there is a number of uh, Virtualization software. Um, 
the most most used one in the NetBC project is pro probably Kimu right now. However, we have also used from the kind of another ones like GXML or TMU. So, uh, as mentioned, um, software emulation is uh, a very good choice for development proposals. However, whenever we need um, execution speed, um, we have uh, trouble with software emulation because uh, um, code is uh, performing very badly in this mode. If Fortis propose, uh, we need hardware as a software emulation in order to get uh, near native speed execution. Uh, right now, the main focus uh, of the NetBSD project uh, is to support hardware features for emulation um, in x86 port, in 64-bit version, plus in this version. However, there's uh, also some interest in uh, the ARM community mainly uh, for this 64-bit uh, platform. Uh, we, uh, we have about three options right now. We used to have a fourth one. It, it was a VM86. Uh, the current, uh, current options are Zen, NetBSD Zen, and VMAN. NetBSD Virtual Machine Monitor and Paxi, Intel, Intel uh, Hardware Accelerated Execution Machine. Uh, VM86 uh, used to be useful 20 years ago when we are using um, some certain type of hardware that had only, for example, only the drivers for uh, DOS. Uh, for DOS, and uh, we could uh, use this mode to uh, use that hardware. And, and, and another option of, uh, was to use uh, to build on top of, of uh, VM86 um, DOS emulator. DOS, DOS emulator is for one of the users, however, this code was mostly un unmaintained, and probably uh, all current DOS users moved to. Uh, other options like those, those elements, Totos box, or, or even Quemu, uh, even software emulator Quemu. It's also already uh, quick enough. Uh, so we have removed uh, the support of VM86. Uh, it's still supported at least in Linux, probably in FreeBSD, but uh, no, no, not, uh, not used. Um, and BSD Zen is a good, 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 good old option uh, for us. Uh, it's a uh, type 1 uh, hypervisor. Uh, it means that uh, we uh, need to redefine uh, the booting process partitions uh, for Zen as a proposal. Um, and um, we can use uh, NetBSD as control domain and, and guest treatment systems. Traditionally, NetBSD uh, was the first mainstream operating system, or first at all, uh, from our operating systems that had saw as native support for uh, control domain that was matched with the mainline. Uh, there was a lot, a little bit earlier port for Linux. For control domain, but it, uh, it uh, needed uh, from some years uh, out of source patches. People had to patch Linux kernel for for Zen and uh, it was more for example the same. Uh, just is a quick and it is the other part. Zen started as uh, para virtualization hypervisor. Para virtualization means uh, that we, are, we overload existing hardware features for virtualization purposes. Later, uh, we get uh, in Zen hardware ac accelerated um, virtualization with HVM. 
happened uh, since uh, since then. Um, uh, there are concepts of uh, mixing, parameterization, and parameterization features and uh, we have uh, PVHVM or PVH. As some of the types of, of uh, uh, parameterization and hardware accelerated refrigeration modes are mostly marketing terms, but um, they are specified in the documentation. There's also hard boards for them. It's, it already has um, um, Find uh, or uh, we defined uh, concept of using uh, parameterization and accelerated refrigeration. Uh, with NetBSD, we can use uh, parameterization as control domain, as guest of operating system. For uh, HDM, uh, we have support for, uh, for guest machine. Is, there is no in, no support in general for control domain in HPM. Uh, there is experimental experimental support for PVHBM with uh, recent features. And uh, as far as I can tell, uh, PVH is still not started, but it's also not not completed for for any project. It's still ongoing project. Um, from uh, the uh, then start is uh, it's also important that uh, we are still working on uh, multiprocessor support for control domain. However, we are already supported uh, for uh, for cast uh, machine. Probably um, there are more users for uh, right now on AMD sixty four with Zen, and uh, recent versions of Zen. A dropped support for uh, all older modes of execution that were uh, still valid uh, like uh, 10 years ago. Today we just support uh, AMD 64 and 32 uh, bit uh, version of this architecture with uh, physical update extension. But there, there's no support in uh, upstream Zen for all the other modes. Uh, of course, you know, ARM support. However, uh, Zen is uh, still type 1 uh, virtualization and is uh, defining the booting process and there's a lot of configuration. Uh, for desktop users, it's usually more convenient to refer to type 2 virtualization. We have right now two options um, to use uh, kernel modules. Uh, together with uh, Cremo. The first one is uh, Axel. Uh, it's a project from Intel. Uh, I'm the portal of, of uh, the software to NetBSD. And then another option is NVMan. It's a, a native uh, engine uh, integrated uh, with the NetBSD kernel. Uh, Axel uh, is a multi platform and uh, hypervisor engine. Supported for NetBSD, Linux, MacOS, and Windows. It could be ported to other operating systems like other BSDs, which shouldn't be that difficult right now. Um, we need, uh, however, it, it will be better to get support for modules, uh, dynamic kernel modules. So, in the other BSD case, uh, we need to uh, read it together with the kernel. So it will be a little bit more convenient with uh, FreeBSD and, and also the Dragonfly uh, it's, uh, it's a product from Intel and on, only for their CPUs. And this also means uh, that it, uh, it doesn't support, support at all AMD CPUs. Um, it's, it, it can be uh, picked from packet source. Um, we just need to uh, install the package and uh, we have a ready kernel module. We can insert it into the kernel. We need to create uh, device nodes and uh, we are just uh, down to starting uh, 
Kenya. Um, hacks works if at least uh, NetBeans, the version 8, it could work with uh, older versions, however, it wasn't tested. At least, uh, I'm not aware about users of uh, older versions with hacks in it. Uh, NVMM, uh, as mentioned, is um, our homegrown uh, native virtualization. It's, uh, it's, uh, it has upfront upfront designed to be um, to do contain API machine dependent and also internals to be as much as possible machine dependent. And this means that uh, you can use one single API for ideally for uh, all possible hardware that uh, supports virtualization. Uh, part of the accelerated mode. Right now we uh, can use uh, Intel and uh, AMD CPUs. First, uh, first uh, in ARM. It's uh, integrated into the uh, distribution, and it's uh, it's uh, um, it's running as a second module. You need just to uh, insert the module into the NetBSD kernel. It's planned for the uh, next release uh, version of mine. It could be backported to older releases, however, um, with a lot of refactoring uh, in low level parts of, of, of the uh, x86 support. And, uh, and potential ports uh, would need um, some glue that could slow down the execution, so we decided to. Focus on version nine. Question: Is there a time frame for version nine? No, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's up to release uh, engineering okay. team. But that they decide uh, if, uh, for example, uh, if the status of test executed here mm. and uh, natively, which is the smart mode hardware uh, that is ex uh, tested natively. If uh, the current branch is stable enough, and we think that it has enough, enough uh, features, uh, the team is uh, decided to branch it, and later uh, we are back up the patches from the current branch. Okay. Once it's uh, stable enough, we uh, we make releases. So uh, we don't have a formal time frame for for the release. Must be driven by uh, the stability of the branches, not the feature. So we have uh, two engines uh, uh, that we can use with uh, Kremlin. Uh, both are designed to be used together with uh, uh, user space uh, virtualization software. Doesn't need to be QMU, uh, it could be something different like Vox uh, with uh, virtualization. Um, both of them uh, need uh, quite a decent hardware, it means that not all of them can be sold. Uh, if, you, if you would want to support older hardware, it would be with uh, heat or uh, other performance. Um, we have managed to use both of them to run uh, NetBSD, Windows, Linux, and uh, other operating systems, various types. Uh, we can uh, use co concurrently uh, multiple virtual machines with, with each of them, and each of them might use uh, multiple uh, virtual CPUs. Both, both of them are uh, BSD licensed. So we have uh, two options for the same purpose from high level point of view and uh, is it good or, or bad? What's <laughs> uh, the rationale? So the hacks uh, was started uh, like one year before NVM. Hacks are important to make BSD. Hack project in general is like 10 years old uh, right, right now. It was open source like two years ago. And um, when NVMe, NV, 
PMM project started, it was uh, developed uh, primarily for AMD CPUs. It was uh, Max and Gillard, uh, the developer of, of this driver, uh, was more interested in AMD at that point. This, uh, this part didn't interrupt the uh, normal process of tracks because uh, I was interested in uh, Intel CPUs. And uh, right now, um, the current difference between uh, Hux and Avinion is that Hux is a uh, cross operating system API. It's, it's uniform uh, between uh, all supported operating systems. And once it's supported in uh, some piece of software, Piece of software, it's very easy to port it to maybe in the PMU case, uh, you had just to uh, change uh, one line in, in, in configure of Quemu in order to expand it to Hux and maybe even expanding uh, PMU from Darwin to Linux was just redefining namespace of few files that were uh, for uh, defined for uh, macros. And they were defined for process. And there, were, there was also discussion whether both logic could, could be merged. However, uh, we have decided that, uh, or concluded that, um, Hux is too much just towards Intel CPUs with its API and internals. And our interest is to use uh, at least AMD and uh, Eli ARM. Hardware. So uh, after operations of the project, we have decided to, uh, that it will be easier to start from scratch with MVMM rather than uh, rework uh, with the existing hard support. Uh, long term, we uh, in general recommend uh, the native MVMM option because. Uh, it's, uh, for example, more, more performant than Paxum. Uh, because, for example, uh, because of uh, some uh, blue layers between operating system and uh, the driver. Uh, here's uh, an example of uh, using uh, NetBSD uh, as fast KMU uh, with um, Windows 7 52 bit guest. There are more, more uh, sc uh, screenshots on, on this page. With more operating system, with Linux, with Grizzlies, etc. Windows. Here is an example of uh, running uh, Windows 10 guest with NVMM. Uh, it's a screenshot by Maxim Villard. It's from uh, his uh, web. There are also more. more screenshots with more operating systems and uh, there, there was also a question uh, whether we could already run Windows with Zen. The answer is yes, however uh, the experience is not, not so great because it's tight bond virtualization and uh, it needs more configuration and uh, we also had uh, at least for the NetBSD case some performance issues wasn't so convenient to use. It was supported by Colton, uh, our developer, but, uh, but it's useful. It, it, can, it can be useful. Uh, we also have uh, a number, we support for a number of drivers uh, for existing uh, public accelerated uh, engine sort of solutions. Uh, we can support. We have support for guest additions in the core box. The driver is called HyperFlow uh, Azure Microsoft Platform. There's one driver uh, for VMware. It's for networking. We have parameterization Zen drivers and uh, virtual drivers. Uh, for future plans, uh, for PMU tasks, uh, I'm the NetBSD maintainer there. Uh, plan to clean up the state with uh, relation of parks and project hardening. It means that uh, PMU is using a JIT code. We need to modify the 
Jitsu generator a companion and general with any other uh, programming. You can uh, select uh, with the user, support with the user. is a special mode uh, in QMU. Uh, it means that on top of uh, QMU, on top of a regular operating system, you can uh, execute one single application that is using uh, QMU features. And, uh, it's a waiting uh, host uh, environment. And also we have uh, we have uh, constantly growing number of patches in packet source because most people prefer to patch uh, software down, down, downstream rather than uh, keep on streaming them. Uh, there's also interest and re uh, for research for H QMU project. So we work at uh, QMU with uh, LLVM code generation for GCode. It can be even uh, 20 times quicker than regular PMU in, in certain benchmarks. We also uh, need a support for device cost tool with PMU. And there's also interest in BDK. BDK is not strictly PMU related, uh, it's a for framework for user faced drivers, mostly for uh, networking uh, uh, hardware. However, however, it can once we implement drivers in user phase, usually fast is good just to virtual machine like QMU. Later we need uh, uh, special support in the virtual machine stack for some drivers. From some tasks, uh, we want to finish uh, multiprocessor control volume support. Uh, it's still ongoing process uh, of uh, getting the support for PVHVM. PVHVM is in practice HVM emulation with uh, PV drivers, uh, parameterization drivers. And, uh, and uh, once it will be a mature solution, we want PVH support. And uh, if that could be possible, and we could get uh, someone interested in the project, it would be nice to support uh, them with our hardware. From hacks and women and and women hacks, um, uh, I want uh, for the hacks project uh, to, fi uh, to finish the process of filling missing gaps uh, of features that are known to work better on other hosts like Linux and on NetBSD. There's still some needs that are not so well supported on NetBSD as host, and whenever hit uh, blending bugs uh, to keep collaborating with upstream active upstream uh, with inter people and community uh, people to help with community support uh, and then project in general uh, needs to mature a bit and uh, we would like to see our um, support so uh, actions are needed here uh, feel free to test uh, NSBSD for support for Zen, Hugs, and VMM in your workflow, in your use cases. Uh, get in touch with uh, developers and uh, user community if you have bugs and we'll patch it. Thank you. <laughs> Good questions? Start the chat room if they have anything. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is uh, actually an open source program with a uh, clock thing in the VMs. Uh, yes. Do you see that in uh, Axum as well? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, approach it? Yes, uh, this is one of the one of the generic tasks. Tasks. <laughs> 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 uh, generic main problem. Yes, generic main problem. Uh, but right now, uh, uh, in our Hacks case use uh, clock uh, driver from PMU. However, uh, it's it's not not uh, performant enough in order to be synchronized between kernel and user phase. It, it uh, the proper solution solution. Uh, it's also implemented in Zen and 
co jest co tam KDM i Linux is to implement uh, public driver inside kernel and, tra and refer uh, to the kernel support because um, other options are, are not uh, synchronized enough yes, to the issues with common support lines. Yes, and, and, uh, and uh, when we want to start some guests, uh, we observe that uh, no, no, not every operating system is fine with our APIC uh, emulation. And, uh, in the Linux case, uh, we need to boot without APIC. Uh, in, in modern uh, Intel hardware, we have option for so something similar to hardware accelerated picture. Uh, hardware accelerated. It's, it's a very similar term. It, it's uh, APIC, virtual APIC. Virtual APIC. Uh, uh, it's using re regular uh, APIC uh, code from kernel with uh, some support from virtual machines and it will be also nice to support it. It's, uh, it means it's uh, quite recent hardware, like maybe uh, years old. Or... Mm. <laughs> Any other questions? I can show a demo if that's for some testing. Sure. Yeah. Maybe. It's really a hard hard demo. <laughs> I just just I just quickly was wondering that I'm I'm not sure if you can do you do you do much with the Zen side of things, or just like uh, Linux stuff. Uh, More sort of so yeah. I there's a one one thing I really so I I didn't end up working with Office until last year, but um, one thing I wanted to work on is getting um, um, so we, we have actually had a couple of people in Australia who've been interested in running their PSN and um, wow. uh, so I think sort of. NetBSD was the first BSD that I ever used, so going way back, but I haven't touched it for a long time, so I'm hoping to do more in the next few years. But um, yeah, just more in terms of, you know, if I have questions or anything about how I'm going to uh, get it, should I go and just figure out who wants to be reaching out to? Do you want to reach me? Oh, I propose to discuss this after the uh, slides. That's really better. So I will show the chat demo. So uh, here's the uh, folder with hard code. There's a core directory that uh, contains uh, generic code and input, and uh, there are platforms that uh, contain uh, all specific files. support for Darwin, Linux, and PSD, and, uh, and Windows. And we have a number of uh, files uh, for NetBSD. There's also a make file for building uh, the kernel module. It uh, picks uh, generic uh, core files that are, that are shared between uh, platforms and uh, picks uh, NetBSD specific applications. Uh, 
infections. Right now we can stop the thing, this is slow as well. There are also some assembly parts. Need to read the terminal module. It's called uh, Haxi Keymod. It's a typical L file dedicated for MLUSD kernel. Just in case. Click. Need to move mode mode. see uh, the real message from Hux and so now we need to pick uh, Hermio with option <coughs> Hux uh, Hux Hux and so everything that we need to uh, use with Hermio only this option I have some speed because uh, typing for Hermio uh, commands can take some time, so it scripts uh, involves some guests. Had some some uh, testing uh, environment, some power files, some power files, or something. <laughs> And uh, no, no, not every boot script is up to date. And we can pick, for example, uh, maybe Windows. Yes, it's using Axel Hacks. Yes, yes. It's using two, two uh, virtual CPUs. Four uh, gigabits of memory and uh, preview uh, or uh, ready image to it. This is normal installation. Let's start the video. Let's try to resize the window. It's uh, working quite, quite fine speed. There's a question from the chat room. Have you tried running a Minix yet? Minix? Um, uh, not my side, but uh, it was tested by a, com uh, a community member. And okay. that Minix, as far as I remember, works. Okay, thank you. Minix uh, only supports uh, from x86 uh, platform 32 bit one. What CPU is your machine here? I5, I guess. Uh, I7, it's the full optics. With uh, 16 uh, gigabits of memory. I cannot show you. That's okay. My laptop has like uh, 4 or 5 years. So I can click and browse my mouse. For, for the Windows case, there are no APIC issues like uh, Linux and so on. 
It's it's an image from the Microsoft side uh, for testing uh, Microsoft uh, Internet Explorer. I think it's uh, for testing whether uh, the Microsoft uh, Windows case. Uh, so two two which was close. One is for uh, probably for uh, for not using the uh, re registration. Period. Yeah, for expired <laughs> license. Uh, in hacks, uh, in general, in uh, probably in a very typical uh, hypervisor, uh, we have also specific CPU ID uh, identification of uh, CPU. For hypervisor purposes, and hacks just picks uh, in class uh, version in string virtual CPU and uh, can use applications with no pain. <laughs> so, yeah, like uh, there are no, no games I think in this yeah. image, but we can also check, for example. There's still enough time. <laughs> cool. Let's pick uh, our humans. The name is Kai, suffix for Arkinos with the uh, peak, uh, no peak. Starting uh, internal messages and later we can see uh, system B. We have a short uh, prompt. Starting some services. It's a class. So we can see. Same uh, mode, CPU mode, which are CPU it's for Fox. It's just works. There, there aren't many interesting programs uh, in the uh, installation view, but uh, it's good enough for, for testing purposes. In my experience, the um, problems were usually we start with the operating system rather than using them. So most of the things were already called. Looking so okay. Let's just start it. Cool. Any other questions? Well, thank you. That was great.